Hey guys, what's up? Good to have you back. And today, again, we're talking about this Abex, and this time not about uh, installation or some random stuff. We're going to talk about front-end scripts, front-end scripts, scripts in the Zabbix, how to use them, why to use them, and what kind of tweaks do you need to make in your uh, server itself, the, the Linux side, to make sure that actually everything works. And a little bit of the background, like why exactly you might need to have the front-end scripts, like how does Zabbix actually operate? We are collecting the data, right, from our hosts. For that, we have items, agents, SNMP devices, and so on. Then we have a front end in which we configure triggers, save the data in the database to be able to visualize it in the latest data. And the triggers can execute. And in some cases for the triggers, we can send uh, notifications to the email saying like, hey, CPU load on this machine is higher than whatever. Or we can execute some uh, remote command on a host. As example, if we're monitoring the Windows service state, maybe up or down, and we notice that it is actually down so we can have a trigger for that and we can have an action that will try to start the service again but the problem with all of that is that the actions those are like based on some event right based on some trigger which says us something and then we execute the action but the front end script gives us opportunity to do all sort of random stuff right from the front end at any time during the date or night or whatever. So the front end scripts are actually already there right from the installation. Uh, but the problem is that they I think they don't work at all, at least most of them. And how you can execute the front end script, you basically just find some hosts usually in the visualization pages of the Zabbix. Uh, as example, here I have my Zabbix server. And here there is a section scripts where you can detect operating system or just run a ping or a trace route. So if we try to detect operating system, global script execution Zabbix server is disabled by the server configuration. We're going to talk about all of that as well, right? So I think we can get it started. And as per usually, um, basically where the idea came for uh, this video is because on the initmax wiki page, there is a new guide and, and like my video is going to be just uh, the visual representation, the, the video about what's already stated here. So we're going to follow these uh, steps. I'm going to comment on them and, and share my opinion. And uh, if you feel more like doing the copy paste, I'll of course drop uh, the link to this tutorial uh, in, in the description of the video. So first thing first, selecting the operating system. I myself have, um, I did some testing here. So cat head C uh red hat release i have the alma linux release 9.4 i'm kind of being uh alma linux fanboy for for a while so for me this one is going to work alma centos rel rocky version 9 if you prefer debian then you should switch to uh this tutorial i believe some some things most likely are changing, just the commands, right? But overall, everything remains the same. So since Zabbix version 7.0, the global front end scripts are disabled by default for security reasons. And that is what exactly why we cannot run uh, detect operating system. And why is that? Well, because for the security measures, having the front end scripts allowed and uh, not having the best practice on the access and permissions in the Zabbix front end itself basically leaves the door open for anyone to execute all sort of random commands on your Zabbix server or maybe even the Zabbix agents. Because essentially what a front end script is, is just something executed here in a CLI. So if we have, uh, let me show you, uh, if we have the front end script here, detect operating system, we can actually go to the alerts and scripts. Here is detect operating system. And here is the command which is executed to um, to get the result. And if we want to like ping, then basically this is the command. And all of these commands are kind of executed in the shell of your Zabbix server. So it's pretty much dangerous to have it enabled by default. That's why since the version 7.0, it is disabled. But if you want to enable it, it's super easy to do that. And another way how you can check whether it's enabled or not is check in the dashboard, uh, the system information widget here, high availability cluster disabled and global scripts on a Zabbix server 
disabled as well, which means that they are disabled on a Zabbix server, but not necessarily disabled on agents because that's a separate configuration file. Nevertheless, to enable global scripts, global commands on a Zabbix server, what you need to do is edit the Zabbix server configuration file. And Zabbix server configuration file is located in the Etsy Zabbix, Zabbix server.conf. And here we need to look for a parameter called enable global scripts. So enable global scripts. By default, it is zero, so turned off. And we will change this to one overwrite the configuration file and as in any other cases with a Zabbix components to uh, make sure that the new changes in the config file take place you need to restart the Zabbix server so systemctl restart Zabbix dash server done and right now we can go back to the front end and uh, go back to our system information widget refresh and voila, we don't have this message about uh, global remote commands, which actually is not entirely what I would want to see. I would rather prefer to have this row saying that uh, the global remote commands on a server are enabled, not just disappeared from the widget, but whatever. So right now we can try to detect operating system, but we again have a problem, right? And this time, this is basically the error message, not from the Zabbix, but from the from the Linux itself. And here in a guide, that's basically in the next step, how we can enable predefined front end scripts like nmup and traceroute to make those default uh, scripts actually work. And also, I want to be straightforward, like I'm missing things a bit up because I've switched my monitors. And if previously I had to look this direction, then now I need to look here and Muscle memory is actually a strong thing and uh, everything is a bit blurry for me right now. And also, I must admit that lately I have so many things going on, which includes work related stuff, hobbies, YouTube, family and other stuff, of course, that I finally admitted to myself that I simply cannot hold everything in my mind anymore. Might come because of the amount of the stuff or maybe just with me growing up and kind of aging, right? To hopefully fix and improve that, I tried many productivity apps. I do love Obsidian and I made a couple of videos about it, but at the same time, I lacked some flexibility with access from multiple places and devices, including the mobile phone. And then I found out about a Notion, which is just amazing tool with extremely wide functionality, which makes a quite a steep learning curve, unfortunately. And that's when I found a solution to learning problem. Skillshare, this video sponsor. And Skillshare is actually the largest online learning community for creatives, packed with thousands of expert-led classes across illustration, design, animation, film, photography, productivity, and so much more. So whether you're just starting out or looking to level up your skills, there's something for everyone. So I really tried to dig through Notion by myself, but every time I got so overwhelmed and demotivated to continue, and eventually I came across an incredible class, Notion Masterclass Maximize Your Productivity and Organization by Ali Abdal on Skillshare. One of the biggest takeaways for me was learning about different widgets that you can get for free in Action and use in your Notion dashboards. This class really helped me refine my workflow and get myself more organized. And finally, I don't forget things and keep my week more more or less structured, I would say. And it's definitely not just about a notion. Skillshare has a classes on everything from productivity hacks to personal development. If you ever wanted to learn AI and innovation, this is the perfect place to start. And the best part, the first 500 people to use my link in the description will get a one month free trial on the Skillshare. So why not take this opportunity to start your learning journey today? Click the link below and join Skillshare. And now let's get back to the actual topic of the Zabbix and the front-end scripts. So the problem why those front-end scripts do not work so great out of the box is the fact that the scripts are there in, in the Zabbix front-end, but for some cases, like the package that you're trying to execute is not. As example, you might be running nmup script, which is involving nmup, which is... Uh, which one is it? this one to detect the operating system, but you don't have nmup on a host at all. So to fix that, what we definitely do is just install nmup, NMUP on a system, right? So click yes. 
and uh, voila, this is done. Next, uh, let's go back, let's close this. And the next thing, important thing, is configuring the pseudo rules. To allow Zabbix to execute commands with elevated privilege, in this case for the nmap tool, create a dedicated pseudoers file such as this and add the following content. Nano, etc, pseudoers, Zabbix script, uh, and, and insert the following content, which is, again, very important. It's easy to do, just copy-paste, and it works, right? But you need to understand what actually you're doing. And basically what is happening um this rules in the suitors file define which commands users can run with the root privileges without authentication so with the root privileges without any authentication on your zabbix server host right which is some kind of sen sensitive place right and uh Remember that you will be able to do that from the front end and who will be able to do that depends on uh, what kind of permissions you will set on the script itself. And just keep that in mind, right? You don't want to be the one who created some security incidents uh, because of trying to fix the front end scripts on your Savix. So uh, let's try to do that. So create a new file here. Copy paste. I don't have nano. Perfect. I will use VI and uh, then we need to enter it here. My system is also running on the on the Zabbix user. So basically it's the Zabbix user who's going to try to execute the command and we're saying that it is able to run without uh, password as a root privilege. Right quit, that would be done. Uh, then we can actually check um, the syntax if we did everything correctly. Like for this example, when we're just copy pasting the stuff uh, it's not a big problem, but in some cases, when you're writing stuff on your own, it might be. So do this and parsed. OK, so everything is fine, right? And uh, yeah, parsed. OK, example one, displaying the agent configuration file. I'm going to try just to do the same default nmup stuff. So go to the dashboards, go to the Zabbix server and detect operating system. And script executed successfully. It took some time, and it's also possible that it's going to hit the timeout. So I actually found a bug in the display. I somehow uh, expanded the window, and there's no way for me to shrink it back. But what we can see from the result is that operating system scan and blah, 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 some nonsense information, Red Hat, Linux. Um, yeah, so basically we know that we have the Red Hat Linux in this case. And you're also able to do some grep and other stuff just to ex extract the necessary value for yourself. And let's grab some other examples. So um, enabling scripts, displaying the Zabbix agent configuration file, which also might be necessary. And first of all, like we did enable the global scripts on the Zabbix server, but it might also be necessary to do that in the, uh, through the agent and uh, which configuration file to touch depends on which agent version you're running whether good old agent one or agent two i think i have agent one so what we need to do is uh, vi etsy zabbix zabbix agent d dot conf and here we need to look for the parameter um the nike because on the agent, it's again a little bit different than on a server. On a server, we have just one command. And uh, on the agent, we have a deny key, which basically by default, uh, let me try to find it, allow key and deny key. I have comment, no, that's the default value. So by default, um, the agent will block any command that is executed by the system run key. And the system run key kind of allows you to execute any command on your Linux server. But the thing is that the front end scripts are essentially also just the system run command. So by default, you will not be able to execute anything um, on your Zabbix agent. And to make sure that you can do that before the deny key rule, insert the allow key, which allows the execution of only a specific script. Never use a general rule with a star asterisk as it can pose a security risk. So basically, if you will add a parameter, allow key system run dot star like this. Uh, let me try to do that. Oh, my God. Just a second. There we go. If you'll do it like that, it's going to pose an incredible security risks because basically you will not have any um, 
any filtering or, or whatsoever on this agent. It's going to execute any command you're going to try to do uh, from uh, from the front end or just from the item key that will run the system.run, which also might include some harmful commands, which we, of course, don't want to do. So you need to use allow key only with those commands that you actually plan to use in your Zabbix system. So right now we use allow key for the system run pgrep, uh, Zabbix agent D, uh, we don't have agent D2, so we need to fix some stuff. Oh no, all good. Like it takes both the agent two configuration and also agent one. So this should work fine. So basically we just enable this key. Obviously, we need to restart Zabbix agent again because we made changes in the configuration file. And uh, what we can do is also we can execute the same command that we're trying to run here uh, just from shell. I think this should work just fine. There we go. Uh, we get the server and server active, host name and include directory. And now it's just a matter to mm, add the same stuff. Uh, to the Zabbix frontend. And to do that, we need to go to the alerts and scripts, alerts, scripts, create a new script, call it um, agent config read, whatever, um, scope, select manual host action, then type select script, type is script, Zabbix agent, com no, not this, uh, n, 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 command, execute, this one. PGRAB, blah, 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 blah. This should be good. Uh, who will be able to use that? Like host group, user group with what required permissions. And I think we're kind of good. Uh, so we can click add. Then let me just think if, 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 if this will work or do we need to make some changes because I have just one dummy host on this Zabbix front end. So we have a new script available, agent config read. And uh, let's expand this. Yeah, there we go. See, here is the result from our Zabbix agent. And there's, let's try the bug again. Yeah, there we go. It goes behind the widget and we cannot shrink it anymore. Cool. Um, that's the first example. This video has been already pretty long, so I'm going to leave the other examples for you if you want to try them. Um, from the InitMax wiki again, the link in the description. Try to use this for your whatever Zabbix installation, right? So there's the timeout handling tutorial and uh, also example of the script execution, adding a drop down menu, uh, the way how you can enabling application restart via Zabbix agent. So the functionality is kind of unlimited. You can use any script, anything that you can run from the shell itself in the front end scripts of the Zabbix and execute them at any time. So Thank you guys for watching. Hope you learned something new today. Don't forget to subscribe. See you later in the next videos and goodbye.